habe ich gar nicht mitbekommen. Alfred, ich gebe es mal zu dir. Bitte schön, die Gruppe der lacht im X. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this product is not a clone. The true SDX is a QRP 5 watt 5 band multi mode transceiver that will literally fit in the back pocket. Now this has been designed by Manuel Delta Lima 2 Mike Alpha November and Guido Papa Echo 1 November November Zebra. Now you may come across all types of USDX clones on various websites. However, the true SDX has been designed in such a way that you will only ever have the original item. Now the way that it's managed is that each unit sold has its own serial number. And to upgrade the radio's firmware, you need to enter that serial number and your call sign into the firmware download website. Your unique firmware will then be loaded onto the radio and your call sign will be displayed on the screen. Now I'll talk more about that a bit later on. Now the designers have designated a select few official distributors of the true SDX. There are a couple of sellers on AliExpress, but for me, I purchased mine from rowwaves.com, who are located in Romania. Now, assuming they have stock, shipping to the UK was like 48 hours. It was super quick, and they ship worldwide, in case you're wondering. You can purchase the True SDX as either a kit or a fully built and tested version. As you can see here, mine was the fully built and tested. It even has a PA efficiency report on the back of the radio to show it's been tested before shipping out. Now the official resellers will also perform the frequency calibration for you, so it should arrive completely set up. However, there are a few options you can change in the menus to suit your needs like TX drive and noise gate, etc. The front panel has an OLED screen, three push buttons for menu, enter and PTT, there's also a built-in microphone on that front panel, along with a built-in speaker. Although the inbuilt speaker is not actually that good, so I would recommend to use a pair of headphones or something like an active portable speaker. The big rotary dial is used for changing frequency or the menu options once you're in them. This can also be pressed down to access menus or change settings. Incidentally, if you double click it, the radio will change band. Now the connections we see are two 3.5 millimeter sockets, one for audio out and the other one for an external microphone and PTT control. The antenna connection is made via an SMA. On the other end of the radio, we find another 3.5 millimeter socket, but this is for controlling a power amplifier's PTT. And next to this, we find a USB socket, which can be used to power the radio or program the firmware. On the top side of the radio, we find a power input, which when used with a 13.8 volt input, the radio should produce close to 5 watts on each band. Now, if you're using the USB for power, then you should expect a power output of around 500 milliwatts. To access the menu system, just press the menu button once. You can now use the rotary control to cycle through each of the menu settings. To change the setting, simply push down on the rotary control to select it, and then turn the rotary control to make the adjustment. Now in the grand scheme of things and with menu driven radios being the norm these days, this menu system has been well thought out and in my opinion, it's very easy accessible. Now just to point out, the screen does not flicker in real life. The recording frame rate of my camera is to blame for this, for the flickering effect. Now as we cycle through the menus, you would have noticed things like noise reduction, attenuator settings, mode, band, and TX driver levels. These are also very easy to change. So let's take a listen to a couple of QSOs, and then after this, I'll perform a transmit test to a web SDR a few hundred yeah, miles away. Eric, you have no problem. Uh, you're in the log. Uh, we have worked you uh, previously uh, back in October last year on 40 meters. So I'm very pleased to meet you on 20 metres here for the first time. Thanks for the quick contact. Good luck in 73 from Orkney Island. Bye-bye, Eric. It'll be interesting to see and uh, compare the difference between the 10 element and the, the 4 element stepper. But yeah, still very happy with it, as I'm sure you are. And the conditions are outstanding at the moment. <laughs> We've been uh, looking at the absolute chaos and confusion uh, with the airlines down at Heathrow in particular, cancelling... Uh, thousands of flights, so uh, I think now is not the time uh, to travel, uh, Peter. Good.
So another cool feature that actually works really well is the CW decoder. Now you can leave this permanently turned on and when it decodes any CW, the message will be shown across the bottom of the screen, just like shown here. I'm now going to perform a transmission test on 40 meters. And for this, I'm going to connect the true SDX to my NFED halfway van center that I've got installed here at my home QTH. And also I'll be connecting a 13.8 volt power supply to it. I'll also be using the internal microphone as shown earlier on the front panel and using the PTT button that's also on the front panel. To listen to this, I'm going to be using the Hat Green Web SDR to listen to my transmission. Well, that didn't sound too bad at all. Yes, it was slightly quiet, but of course I am only using 5 watts and the internal microphone within the housing, which I guess doesn't have any processing. I guess it would be interesting to see how well an external microphone would sound and even with some form of external mic compressor to really get that peak power output. You would have noticed that when I spoke louder, my signal was much clearer. I know in most videos like this, I'll take apart the radio to show you what's inside. However, I only wanted to take one side of the cover off as I didn't want to damage the case. But what we can see here is the filter selection board, which when you change bands in the software, you will hear those relays clicking. So this radio supports 80 to 20 meters. Higher bands are supported, but you will have to sacrifice some of the other bands and change some of the other components of the filter board yourself. Also remember this radio is pretty much an experimenter's radio. So it's not going to be a top tier like a Yaesu or Icom, which costs more than 10 times this true SDX. But this little radio will bring smiles to your face when you're out portable using it. In fact, I may do some more videos on this radio while using it portable, maybe in a field with some kind of wire antenna flung up in the tree. Let me know what you think or if you'd like to see those kind of videos. Now I'll leave links in the description of where you can officially purchase this radio. You will need to provide them your call sign and of course the color of your choice for the case. Unless of course you purchase the kit and then you'll need to burn your own bootloader and firmware once you have built it. Well thanks for watching guys. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube subscribers and members. Without you guys it wouldn't be possible to bring you all these cool little gadgets. Anyway, until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.